Hi there, this is Clint, and today we're going to be doing something pretty cool. We're going to be taking a Kubernetes cluster that's been deployed into the Oracle cloud entirely off the internet. So what we're going to do is uh, take my Kubernetes cluster, which I've deployed, and uh, remove the public IP address so that it's only addressable via the pi private IP. And we're not going to be able to access that cluster through any kind of bastion uh, that's provided by Oracle. Instead, we're going to access it through the ZD overlay securely, and uh, we're going to do this through my Windows 10 computer. On the left here, you see I'm going to run ZD Desktop Edge for Windows. I'm going to use Ubuntu and Windows WSL, and I'm going to use my unmodified kubectl to access the private API across the ZD overlay. Once that's done, though, we're going to take it to the next level. We're going to turn off the ZD Desktop Edge for Windows, and we're going to access the Kubernetes API securely through a Zdefined kubectl. What does that mean? That means we have taken the source code from kubectl and injected our Golang SDK into it to create a Zdefined kubectl, 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 whatever you want to call it. I'll probably bounce back and forth. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and as always, I have a cheat sheet of commands that I am going to do. I've um, created these so that you could run them yourself if you're interested. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make a service that's called Kate's OCI. So I'm going to set up an environment variable that's called service name. And then I'm going to use that service name to make two identities. I need one identity in my ZD desktop edge, and I need one identity in my Kubernetes cluster in this pod. So I'm going to make a Kubernetes identity and a user identity. And since it's Oracle OCI, I'm going to run a command that requires this cluster ID. I just extracted this out to make it easier for you to follow along in case you wanted to run all these commands yourself. As is customary, I like to make sure that I'm not cheating by removing all of the files that are listed inside of my script. It also helps me test the script. Um, as mentioned, I've already created a Kubernetes cluster. This is the options that I selected. I've installed Oracle's OCI tool, as well as Helm in my Windows subsystem for Linux. And as um, as you might expect, I have already deployed my ZD environment, and I did so following this Amazon AWS guide. Uh, and it is indeed running in Amazon right now. So now I'm going to put the file back I just deleted, or actually that didn't exist. Um, these commands right here you'll see are actually available to you inside of the Oracle Cloud itself. So if you were to come into your cluster and click on Access Cluster, you'll see usually you can click Cloud Shell Access, which is pretty neat. And you can access the um, Kubernetes API through the public endpoint in a Cloud Shell. Or you can choose Local Access. And here you'll see these two commands. These are the two that I just ran. They're the same ones, just formatted slightly differently. With this one little exception, I have chosen to output the file to some place that won't clash with your existing uh, kubectl or config if you have a config somewhere. Uh, now we're just going to prove yet again that I have nothing installed already. So if there is a persistent volume, I'll delete it and I'll make sure that ZD host is not installed by a helm. Now we're going to just do the same thing again, but I'm going to use the minus v7 parameter to kubectl which will output the actual URL that kubectl used to connect to. And you can see if I curl to that URL, I'll get a response. This is the public API or the Kubernetes API exposed on a public IP address import. So now I'm going to use the private IP space by using that config file. And you'll notice immediately that it's trying to dial 10.0.0.6. As you might expect, I'm at my home network and 10.0.0.6 is not addressable to me. So this will time out and explode. There it goes. Okay. So now we've shown that there is a public and a private and I cannot access the private kube config. So now I'm going to make those two identities using the ZDCLI. I'm going to add a Helm chart or a Helm repo. Uh, you'll see I've already added it. I need to make a persistent volume. Uh, this is not handled for you by Oracle. So I have this file already here called add persistent claims. So I'm going to run these three commands. I'm going to apply the persistent claims. 
I'm going to then install ZD Host using Helm, the wonderful Helm chart that's out there already. And we'll give that a second to start up and fire up. It does take a little bit of time. So in the meantime, we can use cubes, cuddle, describe, pod, ZD Host to see just about how fast it's uh, cooking here. Okay, successfully assigned. All right, so that's going to take a little bit of time. Um, in the meantime, I, I do want to go and disable that public IP address so that only the private access works. But I don't want to do that before I'm sure that this pod does exist and has uh, come up online. So let's do a cube cuddle logs ZD. Just make sure that this does have logs. It is attached. It did register an identity and everything looks good. Still waiting this to start. Okay. We got a cube. No, we'll just do this one more time. It doesn't take too much longer. I do think it's going to take maybe another time. Oh, it's already running. You can see we enrolled successfully and things are cooking along. Okay, great. So now that that's working, I'm going to go and disable the public IP address in OCI. To do that, you just come over here and click Edit, and click Assign Public IP, and click Save. This is going to take a few minutes, so while that uh, chugs along, we're going to go and talk about some ZD stuff. This looks very daunting when you look at it, but it's really not. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to set the cube config to that private one. We're then going to use cube cuddle to get some information out of it. Then we're going to spit that out onto the screen. So if I run this, it'll make a lot more sense. Okay, so I have created a environment variable named uh, Kate's private host and port, Kate's private host, Kate's private port. And these are the values, as you would expect they are. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, create this uh, DNS name, kubernetes.default. So when I address the Kubernetes API from my Windows desktop edge for Windows, I'm going to use that feature of the desktop edges to intercept any domain name that you so choose. In this case, I'm going to specifically pick kubernetes.default because Kubernetes does provide a certificate it has a subject alternate name of kubernetes.default. It is an option and it needs to match whatever your, um, your Kubernetes environment provides. Now this is a very common um, DNS name for it to add. So it, uh, it's a good one to pick. Here we're gonna go through, we're gonna delete all the stuff that I'm gonna create two seconds later here. You can see, ah, I actually did not clean up after myself and I had to delete a bunch of things. So that's great. Now I'm gonna do the creation. And in the create here, I'm actually going to create a config for the host and a config for the client. What does that mean? The host is gonna be the pod that's in Kubernetes. The client's going to be my Windows desktop edge. So the host address that's going to be dialed is that private host, that 10.0.0.6, I think it was six, right? Six? Yeah, 10.0.0.6. And the port will be 6443, where is it right here? Private port, 6443. So that's where the traffic will leave this node and go to, which is the Kubernetes API. On the client, I'm going to have this client config, and this client config is going to intercept TCP, and it's going to intercept Kate's private host, Kate's private DNS. So basically 10.0.0.6 and kubernetes.default. And I'm going to intercept port 443 because that's what I feel like doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and make those uh, things inside of ZD. I'm also going to create a couple of service policies. These policies will allow my service, any services that are named service name server endpoints to bind the service, meaning they're able to receive connections, and any client endpoints will be given the dial privilege, meaning they can create a connection to a endpoint that can bind the service. Now, once all this is done, um, oh, I, I will have to go and register my identity 
inside of my ZD Desktop Edge, my client needs to be enrolled. And so now I have just enrolled my client. I should get my service. It pops up. And you'll see I am intercepting 10.0.0.6 as well as Kubernetes dot default. So if I were to come to a command prompt and I were to curl to HTTPS Kubernetes dot default, I should get an unauthorized failure. What's also cool is now I can also do 10.0.0.6 and get the same exact failure. Now these were not available to me before. In fact, since I'm running Windows subsystem for Linux, they're actually not going to be available to Windows subsystem for Linux either. If I curl to here, here it's going to tell you can't uh, resolve Kubernetes default. But since IP does not require DNS, if I curl to that IP address, you'll see WSL can address this IP address now. This was clearly not possible before. If you remember way, oops, I cleared my history, but uh, way back before I had run um, cube config, cube, sorry, sorry cube control, uh, get pods. And now I'm still s sitting on the public IP address. Actually, let's just do the V7 trick. Oh no, I'm not. Ah, but, aha, we're going to 6443 which is clearly the incorrect address. So what I could do instead is I can edit this file, find 6443, and replace it with just 443. So now I have edited that same file. And now when I run my cube seedle get pods, it should come back with a whole bunch of extra data that we don't really want, but you can see it, but we'll run it one more time just to, just for emphasis. Now, perfect, excellent. So we have created our ZD service. We have enrolled the two identities, added that identity into the Kubernetes address space and taken the Kubernetes cluster entirely offline. So now there is no public IP address available for the Kubernetes cluster. Very cool. Now what we can do, um, if we wanted to, we could configure uh, Windows subsystem for Linux to access the Kubernetes. Uh, we can do a dig, dig kubernetes.default at, oh, I gotta dig at, never remember, dig at 100.64.0.1 and Kubernetes default returned no error answer kubernetes default right there looked right past it so this is the ip address that the zd desktop edge for windows has assigned to the kubernetes endpoint so now we're going to turn off the kubernetes sorry the zd desktop edge for windows when i do that i should lose access to the kubernetes endpoint oh but it's uh Okay, it's it still is uh, going to resolve because it has a time to life on it. Let's take a look. There it goes. Now it no longer will return because the IP 100.64.0.1 has been uh, removed. So we have turned off our ZDH tunnel. We have no access whatsoever to that private Kubernetes cluster. It's totally offline, cannot be accessed. Now what we'll do is we'll curl the binary for Linux, the cube ZTL, if you will, a uh, cute little name. And we'll try running the cube ZTL um, Kubernetes client, which has been ZDified. And in order to do that, I'm going to need this OCI.json file, which I probably have to do real quick off screen because it's actually someplace special which uh, I am remiss, I didn't have this ready. So I'll just talk to you while I go find the file I need because it's in a place that is difficult to obtain, need administrator rights, that sort of thing. And it's got a funny name. All right, so here we are. So now let's go to the temp folder. Actually, let's go to WSL. 
dollar Ubuntu and um, temp. Okay, oop, that's off screen right here is temp OCI. And let's paste this file into here and I'm going to call it OCI.json. This is the special file that's necessary. It's my identity. Okay, I don't know why that's taking so long. Let's come over here and do an LL, see if it's been renamed. Okay, it has been renamed. Fantastic. Now let's just try to run kubezedl, get pods. We're going to give it minus C, which is the name of the um, identity file, and then the service name, which I created before. Oh, and actually, I should use service name. I should use this service name. Let me just catch that so it's easier for anybody who wants to copy and paste. And failed to post to that is absolutely the wrong place signed by an unknown authority yeah I have oh I see what the problem is I know what the problem is I've already got an OCI in here let me RM that OCI let me move d24 to OCI.json let me run this one more time Fantastic. How cool. So now, let me do the V7 again. You'll see that using Cube's ETL, I have passed the config file and the service name into the Zetified Cube's ETL using this private config file. You can see I'm going to the 10.0.0.6 IP and on port 443. Very different than when we started. There's one last little thing that we can do, which is inside of that config file right here, we can modify this and then find my context. And then in here, I can add in this information. And this is not the correct place anymore. Temp. Let's just make sure that file exists. Oops, no, we'll just do an LL on it. Fantastic. So now, because I was able to modify that file itself, I should be able to run kubezedl get pods. It'll do all the same stuff, all like I just did before. But because it's not part of my context, I didn't have to provide the service name. I don't have to remember that. Um, actually, I want to, I need to, oop, no, 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 no. I want to VI that file again. Where did it go? Right here. Um, because I have pasted the ZD config and the ZD service in, I don't have to modify, I don't, I don't have to supply the context anymore. I can just change my cube config um, or do it however I want. If you prefer to modify your, uh, your cube config, obviously you could. Um, and there you have it. That is the entire video. So we have, let's go back and review. We have uh, created a Oracle Cloud cluster with a Kubernetes cluster already. We have installed a Helm, using Helm, we have installed a ZD host, which is servicing as our ingress to the Oracle Cloud, totally private now. The IP address is gone. Um, we saw it working through the ZD Edge uh, sorry, the ZD desktop edge for Windows. And then we see it working in two different ways using a ZDified cube control, cube cuddle. Cool stuff. Anyway, that's the end of this video. It's been a little bit of a long one. Hopefully you stuck in. Any questions, hit us up on Discourse. Uh, check out uh, ZD.dev and 